Testing, testing. Welcome to the Veneto Club for tonight's MPLW action. Essendon Royals and Bulleen Lions. This is about the volume that I'll speak at. Yep, happy?
round one of MPLW Victoria 2024 ends with a fascinating contest between the two teams who finished on top of the ladder in their respective divisions last season. It's Berlin Lions taking on Essendon Royals playing their first ever NPLW fixture. A meeting of two teams with different histories. Berlin conversely playing their 168th NPLW game tonight and they look to replicate their form last season which saw them finish as premiers although fell just short in the grand final to South Melbourne. Essendon meanwhile won just about everything there was to win in VPLW last season finishing top of the ladder and winning the grand final as well as the cup competition. They've attracted plenty of positive attention of Vince Battiato's team and now they try their luck at MPLW level. And an early run there down the left hand side from one of their new recruits Ava Grober. Comes to an end as a result of the offside flag. My name is Oscar Rutherford. It's a pleasure to have your company for Monday night football at the Veneto Club. Berlin will have a degree of confidence that they'll want to lay an early marker in this season against one of the newly promoted teams. This is Alana Cordellino. Sends the ball in early. Chance still alive. Deflects out to the combination of Roger and Sato. And Saleh's attempt to get a shot away is also brought to a premature end by the offside flag. Plenty of change for Berlin in their team to begin this season compared to what they had last. In goal for Berlin is number one, Aaron Hudson. The captain today is one of their new recruits. Number six, Isabel Dehakis. Number eight, Alana Byrne. And 11, Araha Little in the middle of the park. Two of the mainstays of last season. Cat Nick Poor is in the number nine shirt. Number 12, Miller Bullic. 14, Yuka Sato. Number 15 is Lourdes Gonzalez. A very recent signing by Berlin from Argentina. Number 19, we've already seen Nia Saleh. As we have number 21, Rosie Roger. And number 22, Alana Cordellino. So anyone who saw plenty of Berlin's games last season will know that not a lot of familiar faces in that lineup. We see perhaps an early opportunity for Saleh. Retreats to Burn. Although the Royals look like they will come away with possession. And really only Alana Burn and Araha Little, you could say, were regulars in the Berlin first team last time around. Plenty of NPLW experience players brought in from different clubs. The FB Emerging program as well being utilised with some of the players that Berlin have brought in. Essendon, meanwhile, have similarly made a number of recruits to bolster their squad ahead of 2024 season. This is Alana Cordellino on the right-hand side. And get ready to see plenty of that kind of run in season 2024 for Berlin. Cordellino times a run so well and is absolutely rapid. One of the standouts in 2023 with FB emerging for Essendon in goal is number one, Beth Mason-Jones. Number two, Marie Rample. Number four, Michaela Jurcic. Number eight, and with the captain's armband, one of the new recruits, Emily Sutcliffe. Number 11, as mentioned, was Ava Grover. 13, Philomena Delich. 14, Riona Omea, brought in from Heidelberg. 16, Jess Smith. 20, Kendra Smith. A couple of Smiths in the team, whilst 26 is Danny Marshall. And perhaps most interestingly of all, 24, Audrey Osler, the former Berlin player who started the season on fire at the Venn last season. Now in the white shirt of Essendon Royals looking to help her new team out and begin the season in a similar fashion to she did last time around. Handball there called against Kat Nickpour, so Essendon will have their opportunity from a free kick around the halfway line. Essendon coming into this season off the back of consecutive promotions from State League 1 to VPLW all the way up to NPLW. Vince Battiato has done a remarkable job at the club. Although an early opportunity once again though curtailed by the offside flag so both sets of attackers perhaps just finding their timing with the runs that they want to make. And we'll see Beth Mason Jones go and retrieve the ball before taking the goal kick. Mason Jones, one of the returnees for Essendon this season. She's been a mainstay between the sticks for the last couple of seasons. One of those players who you sense is very important to the, the structure in 
the stability of Essendon. This is Yuka Sato. Brought in from Southern United, impressed very much in the southeast last campaign. Sato's attempts are brought to an end effectively by Riona Omiya. Omiya, of course, a huge recruit for Essendon to be having. It wasn't that long ago that she was playing in the A-League with Adelaide United. And then spent last season at Heidelberg. And she started all 20 of their games. Shot coming in here from Mia Saler. Once again, drawing the save from Mason Jones. were a real attacking threat last campaign, scoring just about two goals a game, which is no mean feat in the top flight of Victorian football. compare that to Essendon's record when it comes to the goal scoring last season 82 goals in 20 games a different opposition and perhaps a bit more likely to see those score lines as a result nonetheless it tells you that Essendon have plenty of firepower although there's no Rachel Alonso in the team anymore she scored 20 of those goals and was the leading goal scorer the other major absentee for Essendon is their best and fairest player last time out Ayano Koizumi took the VPLW by storm last time around, winning that Best and Ferris Award in her first season. 15 goals in 18 games, plus a number of assists as well, and really orchestrated so much of what Essendon did. I've been told that she's suffered some ligament damage, which will see her out for the first portion of the season. Around six weeks is what we're expecting. So a major blow for Essendon, especially when, when you consider how tough their start to the 2024 campaign is away trips to Calder and Heidelberg to follow this one. And then they do play their first game at Cross Keys against Burundara before once again hitting the road to go to Lakeside. So they're really doing the who's who of MPLW venues in the first month or so of their MPLW tenure. Calmly played back by Miller Bullock to goalkeeper Aaron Hudson. A couple of players brought in from other clubs in the off-season. Clever attempted skill from Mia Saleh. And now it's Gonzalez who tries to slide the ball through towards Nick Fort. Just didn't quite get on the same wavelength as a teammate. Mentioned Lourdes Gonzalez, a very late signing for Berlin, brought in from Argentina. So the scouting network extends far and wide for Caitlin Friend's team. A moment of danger though at the back for the Royals. Although the ball looked to take a last touch off Gonzalez, and indeed it did. That was well defended by Michaela Jocic, one of the mainstays at the back for Essendon. Stay at the back who demonstrates a lot of composure and comfort for the Royals defence. Played 14 of Essendon's games last season and despite playing at centre back didn't receive a single yellow card which tells you all you need to know about her sensible approach to defending. This is Jocic dealing with Gonzalez and Essendon do come away with possession. Attempt to slide the ball through is a good one. And an opportunity once more for Ava Grover, but the offside flag, it came late. It was expertly slid through by Riona Ramia. And Grover is a player who we know what she can do at this level with a long history at Calder United. She finished off the chance, but once again, just went a little bit early. There's a strong contingent of Royals supporters who've made the trip across town to be here at the event tonight. And you'll be able to hear them throughout the night, no doubt. 
their frustration be sensed early because that was a really promising attack from Essendon. This is Sato. Roger playing in a more defensive position than we're perhaps used to seeing her. And the long ball sent up by Rample. Causes a bit of chaos for the Berlin defence. This is Osla. Lost out though to a really effective challenge and run from Byrne. Well, a couple of Royals players converged on her and closed down the space. Sutcliffe's pass is deemed to have been handled. That from Berlin's perhaps star recruit. At the heart of defense, Isabel de Harkers, the American, brought in from Portland Thorns. And played some college soccer. She's got big shoes to fill as well. Taking the place of Katie Beck at the heart of the Berlin defense. The most logical explanation. Osla. Didn't get far, and there's a scuffed attempt. Jess Smith, and in the end... A couple of misdirected passes and a balloon throw. Amir nonchalantly tapping it on towards Sutcliffe. And now Roger will come the other way for Berlin. Royals. See neither team able to really maintain possession for particularly long early in this game. Not too surprising. Not only considering the magnitude of the game, but just so early in the season and with teams who have a number of new teammates to form relationships with. Understandable that that might take a little bit of time to develop. Roger again takes the throw and will have to try again after Rample sent it right back over the touchline. Nice turn from Gonzalez. Outside of the boot pass. Asks a lot of Mason Jones, who is alert to the danger. Quick off her line. Starting to see perhaps already the quality that Gonzalez may well be bringing to this league. Very much an unknown quantity at this stage. Cross from Byrne. Finds Cordellino. But that's Jess Smith on that far side who has dealt with the threat of Cordellino up to this point. Bit of a mismatch in terms of size, but Cordellino will back her pace as well as her close control, which we saw on display just there, although a misplaced pass from Gonzalez. such an impressive team at home last season really throughout the season they were so hard to beat and you thought if anything their vulnerability came at the beginning of the campaign when some of their A-League stars that usually join up midway through the season the likes of Paige Zoyce last season there was Maya Markovsky in that list as well Beatty Goad none of those players of course featuring in the starting 11 tonight Although Mayor Markovsky is one of the substitutes for Berlin tonight. Former Melbourne Victory player. Not currently signed to an A-League club. Which is good news for Berlin because it means that she's available from round one in season 2024. Rample. Long throw towards Sutcliffe unable to keep the ball in play and so that will allow Aaron Hudson to go and take the goal kick Sutcliffe, one of the names with MPL experience that Essendon have turned to featured heavily for Burundara last campaign Burundara who took the competition by storm in their first attempt in the top flight, no doubt a feat that Essendon will be looking to replicate so perhaps they're looking to Sutcliffe to 
give them a bit of insight into the magic. Sutcliffe personally scored a number of unbelievable goals for Burundara last season. From memory, I think one of them came here as well. And certainly one to watch out for when she's really anywhere in the opposition's half. This is Byrne. Uses Gonzalez, and it's a beautiful pass to release Alana Cordellino. Cordellino, one on one. But it's a brilliant save from Beth Mason Jones. Closed down the space, and once again denied the chance. It's as clear cut of an opportunity as we've had all night. You can see already the threat Cordellino poses. This is Nick Poor. Thought about cutting back inside. In the end goes for a bit of a detour. And eventually the cross which is sent in is too close to Mason Jones. Beth Mason Jones, a player well known for a shot stopping ability. This is Sato. Tries the one two with Celeb, but doesn't get too far as Kendra Smith comes in to disrupt the passage of play. Kendra Smith, a new signing for the Royals, brought in from across the ditch in New Zealand. Having spent her entire career at the West Coast Rangers prior to moving to Melbourne and taking her football journey another step. Close control from Salaire is impressive. Sends the ball across the face of goal. And the follow-up shot from Byrne. Eventually Essendon scramble a clear. Doesn't look overly comfortable with the ball pinging around the box. It'll be Rosie Roger to take the throw. Looks towards Gonzalez, who wasn't quite able to take control to Harkers now gets past one but not the other and perhaps after a hard fought first 15 minutes we'll see a more comfortable or regular pattern of play develop as Berlin look to maintain possession Far side, Ara Halittle, a player who was used in a variety of positions by Caitlin Friend last season. No doubt one of her best attributes, that versatility that she brings. See a real barging run from Philomena Delic. This is Sutcliffe. Almost ended up back at the feet of Delic. And now Kendra Smith. Marshall, hoping to release Grover, who does get the cross away. Oh, that one a little bit too close to Aaron Hudson. Little once again coming across at the moment of need for a team. Perhaps in these moments of transition, Berlin can really punish the Royals. Cordellino slightly off target with the pass, and that was all Essendon needed to regain control. Ball over the top for Nick Poor. Gets the shot away, Katrina Nick Poor. The desperation defending is enough for the Royals. Combination of Mason Jones and Jocic. Enough to concede the corner. <laughs> 
taken short. Rample attempting to disrupt the build-up. And we see Smith careful not to give away a foul in the penalty area. Sato spreads it back out towards Cordellino. And we will get another corner at the end of all of that. And just a little bit of concern showed towards Jess Smith by our referee, Courtney Van Diesen. Central referee supported by Nicoletta Soteropoulos and Emily Chandler on the lines tonight, calling those offsides. This one's a more direct corner. Mason Jones couldn't grab it. Now Gonzalez back out to Cordellino. Goes with the left. It wasn't too far away, but had a little bit too much height on it. So the first real sustained spell of pressure. Essendon come through it unscathed. Danger attempting to play out from the back. Alana Byrne really executing that press. Essendon, though, do get away with it for now. Sutcliffe spreads it towards Grover. And now this is Osler. Has a couple of supporting runs. Ball left cleverly for the shot to come in from range. Philomena Delich with the strike. That one right down the throat of Hudson. Saw the overlapping run coming from Omiya as well. You get the sense that throughout the season they'll cause plenty of trouble on the counter, Essendon. Perhaps having to rely on those kinds of passages a bit more than they did in VPLW. Essendon's coach, Vince Fatiato, renowned as someone who Loves to get into the weeds of the tactical game. This is his first season coaching at MPLW level, so a big night for him as well. Attempted combination between Gonzalez and Sato doesn't get far. And now Grover goes for the switch of play towards Delich. Still Flamina Delich. A little bit of a miscommunication with Sutcliffe. But the Royals will get another crack at it. This one into the feet of Dehakis, who will take the opportunity to retreat to a goalkeeper. is to Harkers. See, so given the captain's armband in her first game at the club, tells you all you need to know about the confidence that the Berlin coaching staff have in their American import. And really in this first 23 or so minutes, we've, I think, seen plenty of the reasons why she is so highly rated. The picture of composure on the ball partnered by one of the most talented centre-halves in Victorian football, Mila Bulic. A mainstay in the FB Emerging team in 2023. In fact, only played fewer minutes than her teammate at Berlin now, Alana Cordellino. And once again, Nia Soler just found herself going a little bit too early. Perhaps shaking out the cobwebs of competitive football once more. Saleh, another one of the players signed from FB Emerging. Scored two goals last season from just over 100 minutes of game time. So she knows how to make an impact in a short amount of time. Oh, 
burn. And towards Gonzalez, but nicely read by Marshall. Now Smith plays it to Omir. Then Omir has the time to turn. And this is nice football from the Royals. Ball sent cross field towards Ava Grover. Has a couple of supporting runs. Slides it towards Osler. Turns. Opt against firing first time. And in the end, it's a bit of an anticlimactic finish to the move from Essendon. Really nice play in the build up. And just lacking that incisiveness or cutting edge. At least in that passage of play. Although the most promising moment from the visitors tonight that we've seen. Roger. Goes on perhaps a longer run than she had initially anticipated and no teammate was making the run she was asking for. A bit of frustration from the number 21. Big season for Rosie Rogers. Spent a couple of seasons not quite getting perhaps the game time that she might have hoped for. Did make 13 appearances last time around. Only the three goals in return. Although worth noting that two of those goals came in the first two rounds of the season. So she's a quick starter, Rosie Roger. We'll see if she can establish herself as a bit more of a regular starter in 2024. Salah finds Byrne, who looks out towards Cordellino. This is Little. Cut out by Kendra Smith. And Smith. Tried to slide through Osler, but a little bit too much juice on the pass. Burn. Finds its way to Nick Poor. Nick Poor finds her way past Smith and gets the shot away. Now Cordellino. Still Cordellino. Gets around Jess Smith, puts the cross in, and Jocic read it well. And it'll be another corner for the home team as we approach the half hour mark. And a bit of a feeling out process to start out the game. You do sense that Belen starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Nick Poor is the recipient of the short corner. Plays it across that was well saved by Mason Jones. That was an awkward situation to deal with. And Grover once again does battle with Little. Finds its way out. For a long ball to be sent over the top. It's found a teammate, but the offside flag once again deny the Royals. If they can just get those timings slightly better, to really start to get a sense of the attacking threat that they pose. Once again, a run from deep, this time executed by Sutcliffe. So credit too to the Berlin backline for the way they've coordinated their defensive line and in a way forced the Essendon players offside. So Ava Grober involved once more in that passenger play, a huge recruit for Essendon to bring in someone like Ava Grover, not just for her footballing abilities, but her off the pitch qualities as well, and indeed her leadership on it. Grover going all the way from a junior at Calder United to becoming captain of the senior team last season. 
you add to that the five goals and four assists that she racked up for the club that she joined in its formation year in 2016. No doubt a difficult decision to leave a place with which you're so familiar and comfortable, but evidently looking to push herself perhaps a little bit further and joining a team where she'll take on even more of a, a significant role, you'd imagine. Vince Badiato saying that he'd be content with a solid mid-table outcome from the end of this season. You know, the Royals have made a habit of exceeding those expectations over the last couple of years. And they're very much matching it with Berlin in the first half hour of the season. You'd imagine that would breed confidence for the team in white shirts tonight. To Harkers. Crossfield ball. And once again, Smith gets the important header. This is Kendra Smith now sending the ball to seeking Ava Grover. But Ara Halittle has on the whole done a decent job at keeping the winger quiet. Gambolin looking to build up from this near side touchline. Roger so often at the base of these attacks. Burn opts for the shorter pass this time. Sato and Nick Four attempting a clever one too. Kendra Smith has been very impressive in her first half hour of Victorian football. proved a real blockade that Berlin have as yet been unable to surpass. Well, you saw from the nervous look that Rosie Roger gave to the assistant there that perhaps she knew that that was last touch of her team. from Rampel asking a lot of Sutcliffe. Mr. Harkis once again shows her composure under pressure. This is Bullich. A daring run into the middle of the park. The attempt to pass from Gonzalez is cut out. And in the end the Royals come away with the throw once more. Warm night in Melbourne. In a way, quite pleasant conditions for football, certainly for spectators. Perhaps players on the artificial turf will be feeling the heat, particularly as we progress deeper into this game. just mistiming that clearance but it did its job as it goes behind to get another Boleyn corner Boleyn were somewhat set piece specialists last campaign did so much of their damage from these dead ball situations so with no Paige Zoyce it's Solana Cordellino who will go over to deliver the corner. This one's a little bit more central. Mason Jones got a hand on it. Some attempted trickery from Byrne to keep the attack going. 
This is Saleh. Retreats back towards Byrne. Sends it into the box. That one. A comfortable claim for Mason Jones. He's had to remain alert really throughout this first half. Hasn't been given too many moments of rest, the Royals goalkeeper. And the Hark is looking to continue that trend by sliding through Nick Poor. Omiya. Didn't quite get past Sato. And the Harkis retreats via Burn to Hudson. And well, as we edge towards half time, we'll hold that thought as Osler's won the ball back. Sutcliffe once again trying to release her striker. But the ball. Too much power on it. I was going to say that Vince Fatiato, I think, would be more than content with this first 36 and a half minutes of football. His team looked solid generally from open play, mainly just the corners that they've had to contend with. But we know Bellina such a threat. This is Saleh. Over the top towards Nick Paul. Once more, the flag is raised. line for the Royals which has a degree of familiarity to it no doubt an advantage that they have coming into this season that they don't have a whole new set of players trying to keep opposition teams out that foundation is a solid one this is Grover cuts back inside and attempts to release Smith the cross sent in and remained in play just about Osler Got a touch on it and the assistant deeming it was the last one. So it will be a Boleyn throw, or goal kick I should say. Sato showing her close control skills. Certainly a feature of her play with Southern last campaign. This is Nick Poor. To Katrina Nick Poor. Had a couple of opponents to contend with. Kelly Jurtic doing enough to send the ball out for a throw. Former Melbourne Knights captain at the heart of the Royals defence. Continuing, continuing her run is Nick Poor. Spent last season at Heidelberg. Prior to that, of course, was very strongly associated with Alamein, was Kat Nickpool. Didn't have a bad season with the Burgers last time out. 17 appearances. With the three goals and the three assists to her name not perhaps the return that she would have been hoping for although it wasn't the best season for the burgers all round <laughs> clever touch and turn from gonzalez uses nick poor sliding it towards Saler. Mason Jones has been so on top of those moves throughout the night. 
Kendra Smith now runs into Alana Byrne. Fortunately for the Royals, it will continue to be their possession. So do Willene have one more push in them for the final five minutes of the half? This is Byrne. Saleh towards Sato. And now Bullich. And as far as Smith, but the attack continues for the home team. Heard Alana Byrne there telegraphing the pass she was about to make and indeed executed to Nia Saleh. Once more, the Royals, you see so many numbers back just completely clog up all the space that Berlin would hope to work in. A moment of danger as Dehakis. Let the ball run a little bit far from her. Bullich as well is under the pump. Although ever composed is Aaron Hudson, a player vastly experienced at this level. Well, Mason Jones, who's quite the opposite, has impressed nonetheless in her first half of MPL action, that time coming a long way out from her box and strategically tipping the ball over the fence so that Berlin couldn't restart the play too quickly. Gonzalez uses her body well, puts the cross in. Nick Paul was there, couldn't find the space for a strike. And now Grover will send the Royals in the other direction. Once again though, those attacking players for Essendon being asked to do a lot with not a lot. Often just the two of them in those attacking moves. And so difficult to break down this Berlin defense at the best of times. But granted, it is quite a new look back four for Caitlin Friend's team. Rampel sends the ball up in a, this is her third season at Essendon. She's been a key component to the success that they've enjoyed over the last couple of years. Amir's pass is blocked. Now Dehakis and Saleh combine. Attempt to slide the ball through. Gonzalez, touch with the right foot, almost got the second one with the left. And yes, Smith showing some agility. Well, Dehakis has remained higher up the pitch. Alana Byrne's gone to fill in at the heart of defense. Here is Byrne. First time really that we've seen Dehakis venture further forward. That's something we can expect to see and unsurprising considering her quality on the ball. This is Saleh. called on Riona Omeo who got her body strategically in between Nick Poor and the ball. It's inviting that challenge. Well as we move just past 9 p.m. local time, the final 30 seconds of regulation in this first half. We start to wonder whether there'll be a sting in the tail. Ethington have shown, certainly shown a capacity to 
get in behind Boleyn's defence. And perhaps this is the moment for Sutcliffe. Just left herself a little bit too much work to do. Delich. And now Amir. Kendra Smith was crowded out. Cordellino's attempt to find a teammate doesn't quite work out. And once again, Sutcliffe is the target of the throw ball, but I think a little bit of a tired hand up from the player wearing the armband. She's been making a lot of those runs. And the uh, ask to change direction so suddenly a little bit too much, just late in the half. Danger now for Berlin as Osla gets the shot away. And Audrey Osla against her former side has given Essendon Royals their first goal in MPLW. Right at the end of the first half at the Veneto Club, it's the Royals who strike late. And who else but Audrey Osler to do it? The chance really coming from nothing. A poor giveaway. Ava Grover was alert and slid through the number 24 who executed a pinpoint finish in off the post. And there isn't much that Hudson could do in that kind of situation. Just like that. It's Hessendon Royals who look like they'll be heading into half time in the lead at the Veneto Club. An upset brewing on this Monday night. Delich has Osler there. Amir. Did Valene have a late response? Nicely dealt with by Jess Smith. In fact, it was Danny Marshall, apologies. He now sends the ball up long towards De Harkers. And it is De Harkers who tries her luck from a long way out. That one, one of the more comfortable saves that Mason Jones has had to make in this first half. And indeed, that is half time. It is Essendon Royals who go into the sheds with a 1 0 advantage late in the half. Well, one back by Ava, Ava Grover slid through towards Audrey Osler, the former Berlin player, who finished off the chance. And Essendon Royals have something to protect going into the second 45. Certainly will be plenty more twists and turns in the second half of this contest. Be sure to join me for it. But at the break, it's Berlin Lions nil, Essendon Royals 1.
back underway in the second half of the final game of round one in MPL Women's Victoria. And the score at the break is a bit of a shock one. Essendon Royals leading the defending Premier's Woolene Lions 1-0. A late goal scored by Audrey Osler, putting the Royals in the driver's seat as we head into this second 45. Temperature finally beginning to drop a little bit, which will perhaps make things a little bit more straightforward for the players on the pitch. After what was anything but a straightforward half, for either team really, Essendon soaking up a lot of pressure really impressively, especially with the series of corners that Berlin had. They continued to threaten on the counter. They couldn't quite time their runs correctly. Caught offside on a number of occasions, but they got it right when it counted most, right at the end of the half. So we see an early opportunity here for Nick Poor. Ball falls the way of Alana Cordellino. And Mason Jones, as she did so often in that first 45, off her line and closing down chances. One of the standout players for the Royals to begin the game. Danger, though, could be about to reappear as Gonzalez comes. Mason Jones uses the head. Has to race back into her goal as Sato attempts the cross. Important block, though, allows the Royals to get the ball clear. So evidently, Pauline coming out with a bit of fire in their bellies. And once again, asking their visitors to defend a barrage of pressure. ball a little bit too much on it for Osler to get onto <laughs> Osler's goal coming after Ava Grobel won the ball back high up the pitch Berlin just losing concentration for a moment trying to play out from the back and Essendon punished them in the best way they could that ball unable to be kept in play by Nick Poor. Smith to take the throw on this near side. Had plenty of attention in that first half, dealing with the balls in behind towards Alana Cordellino, her direct opponent. To Harkers, goes first time. Now a nice combination between Smith and Sutcliffe, ends with an attempt to send the ball forward from Amir. Jelic unable to keep control. The long ball sent forward by Miller Bullich is caught by Mason Jones. Perhaps though an opportunity here for Delich. Sutcliffe is there in support. The harassing Rosie Roger. And it's enough for the visitors to win themselves a throw on that far side. Marie Rample up towards Osler. Still Osler. Goes with the left in the end, but hesitated just a moment too long. And now the long ball. Gonzalez. The Argentine. Sato. Cordellino. Actually gets on the outside of Smith, but it's excellent defending from the 27-year-old Jess Smith. Brings her side a goal kick in the process, and she's kept Alana Cordellino relatively quiet in the first 50 minutes of this game, which is no mean feat. As viewers of MPLW last season will be well aware. See the Royals. Not taking any chances with their play out from the back. So it's worked out nicely between Osler and Smith. The pass, though, is straight into the path of Dehakas.
Kubelin more often than not heading towards Cordellino to start this half. But as of yet, unable to create any real quality opportunity. Dehakis, that could change now as Cordellino. Nice first touch, but the Royals' defence has been alert from the first whistle in this game. Osla ran into trouble. This is Little. But Osla gets an important toe in and plays it off her opponent. Person and pinned back to begin this second 45. There were certainly periods where that was the case in the first half as well. Well, if they can continue to survive it, it's, I think, reasonable to say that Boleyn haven't really created many high-quality chances despite their control of the territory and possession, which is a credit to the way the Royals have gone about it. That, though, is a foul from Kendra Smith, which will see a, the first name into our referee's notebook. Dragging down Yukasato and allowing Boleyn a dead ball opportunity. Nick Four, looking like the person charged with the task of delivering the ball. Sato has stayed out of the box and is hanging on the right hand side as a potential short option. Or will Nick Four go direct? Indeed, she does. Mason Jones gets a hand on it. It's an important one as well. She does enough to allow the Royals to escape again. Roger who will restart the play by using Burn. A couple of players who we haven't seen that much of at the beginning of the second half. Cordellino now does get in behind, plays the ball across where Gonzalez got a clean boot on the ball. Just couldn't direct it past Mason Jones. Who has just been sensational in this game up to this point. Smith Mason Jones. She starred in the Nike FC Community Cup final shootout last season. That put her name on a number of people's radars. No doubt more will be taking notice of tonight's performance. Well, for what feels like the first time in the half, it's the Royals looking to control a bit of the territory. Ramble's header finds its way towards Sutcliffe. Very committed a foul. You saw the grab of the jumper of Rosie Roger. And that will perhaps bring an end to that brief spell of Royals territorial control. Important touch from Sutcliffe and cops a nasty kick from Isabel de Harkis as a result. Didn't look to be anything too malicious in it. It was just a little bit too quick from Sutcliffe. And after a first half without any cautions, we've now seen two in the first 10 minutes of this second. Set, up, set piece opportunity for the visiting team. They've defended so many of these. What can they do when they're on the attack? Osler's the target. Got a head on it as well. 
perhaps was hoping that a teammate would latch on to the header. In the end, it's a comfortable claim for Hudson instead. Hudson, the player, dishing out a lot of the instructions when Baleem came out from the half-time break and did their team huddle before the game restarted. This is Grover. Has Sato and Little to contend with. Takes the ball nicely and got the cross away. The chance could yet continue with Kendra Smith. Jocic. Smith. Tries the pass and Little's touch isn't enough to take it away from Grober. So nicely slided ball towards Osla who goes with the left. From a tough angle, Hudson always looked the favourite. Osler wasn't able to beat the goalkeeper from that position. Really a healthy crowd has turned out on this fine Monday evening. Most of the Grandstand on, on grandstand on this side of the field has been filled up. Plenty of family and friends support for the players, for both teams. Bullic. The pass from Marshall straight to the opposition. This is Gonzalez winning her team a corner off Jurcic. Bordolino will once more trudge over to the corner flag. But it looks as if before the delivery, the Royals will make their first change of the game. Well, it appears as if it's Philomena Delic whose night will come to an end. The wide player brought off and replaced by Kat Goff. And that's another significant debut in a Royal shirt. As we see the corner claimed once more by Mason Jones. Kat Goff, uh, another of the players with immense NPL experience, predominantly well, most recently with South Melbourne. This is Osler, though. Sends it across cleverly, hoping for Sutcliffe. Goff is involved in a first passage of play. Sutcliffe with the cross. Osler gets ahead on it. And Mayer's on the follow-up. Or just rising too high for her to really make meaningful contact but seeing already the threat that Kat Goff poses really good to see Goff back at this level didn't play a whole lot last season took some time away from the game just the one appearance with South Melbourne also played for Melbourne City at A League level, or in the setup, I should say. So no doubt she's got plenty of, plenty of pedigree. Cordellino now. They resume battle with Smith. And this time it ends in a bullying corner. Marshall coming across to help out. Cordelina this time played it short before delivering and she had some really stiff contact as Yuka Sato shot cannons off Danny Marshall. This is Roger, slides it across to Gonzalez. The Royals come away with the ball once more. Long ball sent. It's a good one by Sutcliffe. Grover's on side because she started in her own half. Ava Grover. Doubles the Royals lead. A sensational debut from Ava Grover assisted the first and now adds her name to the score sheet. Lethal on the counter. As Grover timed to run to perfection and then slid the finish underneath Aaron Hudson. And the Essendon Royals as we move to the hour mark 
have a 2-0 lead at the Veneto Club. A quite unbelievable start to their MPLW campaign. And this newly promoted team are on the cusp of achieving something quite special. It's a different Boleyn team than the one that finished last season. But even then, so much quality and resources afforded to this Boleyn outfit. And yet, they're staring down the barrel of a defeat to open the 2024 campaign at home. We did begin last season as well, hosting a newly promoted club. That was Burundara, and that ended in a 2-2 draw, which was a positive sign for what the Eagles were going to produce later on. And the Royals threatening to go one better. Grover once more attempting to slide through. Bit of a foul called that time. Mr. Harkers. That's a little bit of frustration you saw there seeping over. Nia Saleh just catching Mason Jones late after the goalkeeper had already well and truly claimed control. Well, I apologise to Mia Saleh, it was in fact Cat Nick for with the booking. The striker showing some frustration this not the night that Boleyn had envisaged would take place. And Cat Nick for perhaps finding herself Somewhat starved of service, hasn't quite been in easy positions to get high quality shots away. Berlin will take the opportunity to head to their bench. as if Betty Michael has been brought on, the former South Melbourne player. Another one of the new additions for Berlin. Made 18 appearances in South Melbourne Colours last time, or well last season I should say, although only six of those in the starting lineup. So perhaps hoping some more opportunity in this Berlin team although it will be hard to come by considering how star studded they are as we see the long range attempt from Alana Byrne but considering what Mason Jones has dealt with so far in this game no doubt that one will have felt very comfortable for her was Nia Saleh who was brought off to allow for Betty Michael's introduction and that change has also meant that Lana Cordellino has switched wings over to the left hand side hoping perhaps a bit better fortune than she got against Jess Smith Amir plays it through towards Goff and Kat Goff just didn't quite find her balance as she attempted to play the cross Zales asked to do a little bit too much with that one as Kendra Smith's pass didn't quite find Sutcliffe. And much like the Berlin wingers, it looks as if we've had a switch of positions for the Royals with Kat Goff coming onto this left hand side and Grover moving over to the right. This is Grover. Ostler's there, he's crowded out large part by Miller Bullic. Cordellino. Not getting a whole lot more luck against Marie Rample than she did against Smith. And Berlin once again will look to their bench with Maya Markovsky brought on. 
taking the place of Kat Nickpaw. Of course, received that yellow card not too long ago, so they're turning to some established quality in Maya Markovsky. A decent season last time out, the former victory striker. 13 starts, which she rewarded her team with five goals and four assists. Someone interesting to see her not starting tonight. Played behind Kat Nickpour, so Makovsky will be looking to perhaps send a message to her coach, Caitlin Friend, with or in this final half hour or so that we have left in this game. It all coming across to snuff out Kat Goff's run. from Dahakis, who's just looked full of class in her first outing in MPL Women's Victoria. That pass though, who else would it be but Jess Smith there to cut it out. Amia sends Markovsky the wrong way. Now Gonzalez. Out towards Michael. Plays the cross out towards Sato. To Sato, back to Michael. Just not quite on the same wavelength as her teammate. And the frustration continues for Belen. There has just been so much to like about when Essendon Royals have produced in their first MPLW outing. Vince Fariato's team, he's got them humming early, even with so many new faces. They've looked like a really well-organised outfit, both in attack and defence. And at the moment, they're in pole position to begin their season in dreamlike fashion. Of course, it would match the result of the other team promoted from VPLW in Brunswick, Juventus, who got their season off to a great start with the win at Wembley Park against Box Hill on Friday night. This one, I think, would be even more impressive if the Royals were able to cling on for three points. Smith slides it towards Osla. Bullich got panicked a little bit. Sutcliffe gets the rebound, goes from range. Osla once more. And a vital block from Miller Bullic. A little bit of a miscommunication between centre back and goalkeeper, which invited the pressure. In the end, Berlin come away with it. And now Miller Bullic charging forward. You see her asking her teammates, someone give me something. And indeed, Betty Michael does. It's a nice ball in behind. Michael puts the cross in. The Royals are back in numbers, as they have been all night. Now Grober. A little bit of tiredness, you can see, in that last action. Understandable in the first game of the season. Sato. He's worked tirelessly throughout the night. Well, if you were to level a criticism at Berlin from last season, there weren't a lot of them considering how successful they were. There were moments where they really struggled to break teams down, just relying on those, at least in open play, balls in behind. And when you've got a really well organized and a cohesive defensive setup, as the Royals have demonstrated, that can be rather ineffective, as we've very much seen. Now Riona Omiya. Sutcliffe sends Byrne the wrong way and now plays towards Goff. Goff takes the cross early. Hudson was out to deny Osler.
Osler, one of the players who was perhaps unfortunate last season to be pushed out by some better known players as the A-League season finished last time out. And hold that thought as there's a daring run down the right-hand side by Marie Rampel, who's charged out from defence and won a team a corner. And the confidence that just continues to build for the Royals. Yeah, they're starting to think that they may indeed do this. 2-0 up heading into the final 20 minutes. Berlin, who are going to make another substitution. Rosie Rogers' night has come to an end. And it's Leo Maldiri who will play out the remainder of the game, starting with defending this corner. Just a little bit flat. But on the second attempt, the shot comes in and forces a really smart save from Aaron Hudson. The Royals adapting quickly to that situation and forcing the Berlin goalkeeper to concede the corner this time from the other side. David Grover trudges over to send it in. See, by the way, that Essendon has set up very much uh, an established routine that they've got. The players are waiting a long way away from the corner kick taker and now will make their run towards her. It's lofted high. Osler got ahead on it. Hudson, though, came out quickly to make the claim and now hoofs the ball long, although he doesn't have a whole lot of teammates in the area. Kendra Smith great awareness of what was around her. And Maldiri forced to concede a corner. Well, the gauntlet's been laid before Berlin. Do they have another gear to go to? Because they're going to need it in these final 18 or so minutes. They just haven't looked that much like scoring throughout the night. Full credit to the way that the Royals have executed their game plan just about to perfection, you'd think. Now Vince Badiato's team happy to spend some time camped in the Berlin half. With a few repeat set pieces, also just a chance to make sure any energy stocks might be replenished. You'd think that the hosts would have one more big push in them to try and salvage something from this game. Grover with the attempt, and it comes off the crossbar. Really a chance out of nothing. Grover saw the moment, instinct took over. And Erin Hudson, you saw her accepting her fate that she wasn't going to get to the ball. But the crossbar does come to her rescue and keeps Belaine in with a sniff of a chance. Grover, best little once more. Smith had good awareness, knew that Gonzalez was coming from behind. Jurchich coming across to support her fullback on that right side. And every time Bellina have attempted to come down the wings, the player's been facing a numbers disadvantage, it's felt like, which has been a huge part of the reason that Bellina have been so ineffective in those wide areas. And stepping out of the defensive line was Danny Marshall player who I haven't yet mentioned her fascinating story to end up 
in this Ashes and Royals team in season 2024. Of course, our thought is Belene. Throw another lot of bodies forward. This is Markovsky. Looks for Gonzalez. Oh, it's awkward for Riona Ramia. And then a pretty clear foul committed by Markovsky on Kendra Smith, who's just been so impressive in her debut. But Danny Marshall is a player who, well, it's not the first time that we're seeing her in an Essendon Royal shirt. Initially playing for the club back in 2021 and scored a number of goals. Then has spent the last few years playing in the AFLW and the VFLW with Western Bulldogs and the Essendon Bombers. But has now returned to football. She's American as well, Danny Marshall, the first American to play in the AFLW. And we've seen her taking on some stiff challenges in this game tonight. No doubt something that she's more than used to based on those experiences. You can't imagine that she'll be one to shy away from the physical battle in this MPLW season. And Belene really struggled to generate chances of note, particularly in the last 10 minutes. They, they look like a team who's exhausted and bordering on defeated. Gonzalez continues to toil. Burn. Sato. Will one of these midfielders be able to unlock the Royals' defence with just a special pass? run from the fullback position comes from Maldiri. He goes to ground. Referee thought about it for a moment but was content that it was a fair use of the body. Although Boleyn do get a corner for their trouble. Oh, well, there's no short option this time. This will be on the head of Beth Mason Jones you'd think. Indeed it is. The goalkeeper got something on it. It's a scramble on the goal line. And eventually, Beth Mason Jones collapses on the ball. Hasn't always looked completely comfortable dealing with those situations, but she's done enough. She's probably been the most important player on the pitch tonight for Essendon. This is Bullich. Marshall couldn't quite get there in time. Instead, Markovsky played it out to Little. Now Michael returns it to Markovsky, who sends in the cross. And now Amia will look to launch the counter for the Royals. Grover, a few metres behind Araha Little. Well, it's tough to come back from 2-0 down with 10 minutes to go at the best of times, but especially in round one when you can understand an immense amount of tiredness felt by both teams. They have to dig deep, Bulleen, as we see that long-range attempt from Byrne comes to nothing. And the Royals, it looks, will take the chance to make another substitution. Emily Sutcliffe. Her debut for the Royals will come to an end, an impressive one too. Really playing a vital role both in attack and defence. And it'll be another one of the new faces in this Royals team, Ruby Deeg, brought on for the last 10 minutes. Coming across from the other team promoted from VPLW, Brunswick Juventus. Deeg also one of the players with experience in the FB Emerging program, still just 20 years of age. Plenty of youth and promise in Vince Battiato's squad as well. Cordellino. Nicely dealt with by Smith, who now looks to slide the ball through towards Grover. Doesn't quite have enough width on the pass. Oh, 
Sato pinches it from Amia. And Jess Smith has countless times throughout the night been the player on the front foot and snuffing out attacks. Calderian to Gonzalez. Didn't quite get the ball out to Cordellino on the wing. Three points, if Essendon are able to hold on to them, would be a remarkable outcome regardless of how it came about. To do it with a clean sheet as well, and to have looked so solid at the back, you can only imagine how pleased Vince Battiato would be with his team's effort tonight. The game is certainly not over yet, Berlin. Did score some late goals last season on quite a few occasions to get themselves out of trouble of course famously did so in their preliminary final victory over Calder ball sent across and Smith's there the clearance isn't the most convincing Cordelino got the cross away perhaps it glanced across an arm at some point Maldiri on the follow up didn't make the right kind of contact at all which will allow Mason Jones to take her time as she goes to retrieve the ball and restart play Essendon with that two goal buffer more than comfortable I think to sit back and absorb a little bit more they've done it all night of course, if the opportunity arises, we know they can pounce on the counter. <laughs> Mentioned at the start of the game, what a difficult start to life at MPLW the Royals have trips to Calder and Heidelberg to follow tonight. You cannot understate just how much confidence this would give this team. They are able to hold on for the three points. Marshall there to deny Markovsky's cross. First home game for the Royals, 6th of April when they welcome Burundara to cross keys. The team whose feats last season wouldn't put it past them replicating based on tonight's showing. Ball from Michael. Header comes in. Berlin do have one goal back. The game is not over yet, as they did so often last season. The set piece does the damage. A nice ball sent in by Betty Michael. And the header put away. Well, I think it was Mila Bulic. So a first goal back in Berlin colours for Bulic. And with that, perhaps the Lions have another surge in them. You see the extra bit of energy that's been injected into the game. will really test the medal of Essendon with Berlin finally having broken through and those set pieces you can't imagine it'll be the last one that Berlin get tonight and if they do I mean they probably deserve to go from those kinds of situations Essendon haven't always looked entirely comfortable dealing with them. Gonzalez is onside. Look towards Betty Michael, but the ball just too close to Beth Mason Jones. And it's 
times like these that you look towards your leaders if you are Essendon. Trying to keep the team calm and composed. As one of the best teams in Victorian football charges at them. Muldiri now looking to get onto this ball. Fresh legs having come off the bench not long ago and does enough to win her team a corner. And well, it's bite your nails time if you're an Essendon Royals fan. Alana Cordellino will deliver this corner. Near the height of Markovsky and Bullich, of course. Dehaak is the other center half. Crowding the goalkeeper once more. Cordellino's cross. Punch came in, follow up from Sato. And the Royals do enough to come away with the ball. Another goal would surely kill off the game. Deeg couldn't quite get the ball to Grober. Rampool sends it up towards Oslo once more. And now Sato, nice spin. But no real ball progression as a result. Maldiri in towards Byrne who leaves it for Sato once again turns away from her opponent Cordellino takes on Rampool follow up shot comes in from Alana Byrne and not too far away the shot though over the crossbar Bellin with a late surge. The Royals clinging on to their three points at this point. It hasn't felt like that up until that goal a couple of minutes ago from the corner. But this is what Bellin do so well. And it's really the result of their hyper-impressive performances or results over the last couple of seasons. See the attempted clearance doesn't get far. Marshall sends it up into the night sky and out for a throw. Michael wasting no time. Uses Markovsky. Now Markovsky. Earns the corner. This position, the Berlin got their first goal. Michael once more with the delivery. That one, not what she was looking for. Ball hardly even in the field of play. And at this stage of the game, it's an absolute relief for the Royals. And just a source of even more frustration for Berlin. over a minute of regulation time remains goal kick goes short now this is Deeg worked away by Bullich and Grover came to support but foul called and a little bit of afters to go with it and Ava Grover goes into the book for her troubles Can't imagine this kind of stoppage is what Bellina looking for right at the moment. Seeing a number of the players asking the player to be restarted sooner rather than later. It's to Harkers who sneaks a few extra meters when the referee's back is turned. Well, it seems as if the referee was alerted to it and so will force the redo. Well, the redo was, I think, for a rolling ball, not for the creeping of a few extra metres, so Dehakis gets away with it in the end. Deeg. That was a pretty clear-cut handball, that one, from Jess Smith. 
ball just getting a little bit away from her. And so Boleyn will once again have their chance from a set piece. The Harkers to send it in as we head into injury time. Is there one final twist for Boleyn? It's got good depth, the ball. Calls for handball. Shot gets away. Another important save from Mason Jones, who eventually is able to claim possession. Hard and mouth moments for the Royals. And we're really at the discretion of our referee as to how much longer Berlin will have to try find that equaliser. Little allows the ball to roll out of play. Throw to Michael is misplaced and Smith cleverly plays it off her opponent for the throw. That's exactly what the Royals needed right at this moment. Goal. Has the pace to beat Little. Gets the cross in. Not enough support as Hudson quickly collects and sends it long. Gonzalez. Jocic is there. Back to Byrne. And now across to Little. Can the cross coming this time? Not yet. Ara Little instead opts to go even wider with Michael. And the throw one for the Lions. Right next to the corner flag. Markovsky turns one way, then the other. Gets through a massive body, sends the cross in. Byrne got the shot away, the follow-up from Sardo. Mason Jones as well. It's chaos in the box. And in the end, the Royals escape. An unbelievable scramble. But in the end, Essendon Royals are creeping ever closer to a monumental three points to begin their life in MPLW. Beth Mason Jones, take a bow. It's been an unbelievable performance right until the very end. Smith's ball looks to release Goff. Zaharkis had the composure to use the body. The chance could still be coming. Deeg. Now ball sent in towards Grober. Is there perhaps to be one more attempt? Mason Jones out of her box and gets the boot on it. Finds a teammate as well. Gonzalez. And Maldiri. Markovsky and Cordelino combine. Cordelino finally beats her opponent, sends the cross in. Michael's there. The follow up shot. Not the right kind of contact from Gonzalez. Can Bullich keep the attack going? It's all hands on deck for Essendon Royals. And they will indeed make use of a substitution as they try to see out these final minutes. Ava Grover's the player who will be brought off after a brilliant performance, including a goal and an assist. And it'll see Jacinta De Cruz, a player returning to the senior team after missing last year through injury, to make her way onto the pitch for the final seconds of this game. Deeg, an important touch to get it to Goff. Tough by Jurcic, Byrne. The Royals just 
trying to avoid giving Valine any space whatsoever. Markovsky has been heavily involved since coming on. Gets the cross inside, looks for Gonzalez. We're into the sixth minute of injury time. And the Royals will have to defend yet another throw in. I understand some players perhaps starting to feel some cramp. Once again, the bodies do the work for Essendon. Shot from range is the end result. Mason Jones couldn't take control of it. Just about the first misstep of the night. And there will be time, it seems, as we head into the 97th minute for one last corner for Valine. Betty Michael to deliver. It's a little flat and sent away. Still we play on. Cordolino gets past one, not the next. Jurcic sends it clear, and that is full time. Essendon Royals have made their mark on the MPL Women's Victoria. They've beaten the reigning Premier's Berlin Lions on their home deck. A brilliant defensive display. And with counter-attacking football to go with it, Audrey Osler opened the scoring just before the halftime break. Before Ava Grover doubled their lead just before the hour mark. And despite the late goal from the corner for Berlin, it's Essendon Royals who have sent out a warning to the competition. A super impressive 2-1 result. Not the start to the season that Berlin were hoping for. But for the Essendon Royals, their first game ever in MPL Women's Victoria could hardly have gone better. Three points to begin for both of the newly promoted teams in MPL Women's Victoria, and what a way that is to round out the opening round of action. Thank you for your company tonight. I've been Oscar Rutherford, and the full-time score at the Veneto Club is Berlin Lions 1, Essendon Royals 2.